an important principle to understand is that when I talk about intellectualizing versus feeling, the, the journey to God realization is not an intellectual one. And yet that's what's taught by so many teachers and so many religions about study, study, study. And, and while books are important, they have a, they have a place, they have, they have a role and a very great role. The real nuts and bolts, the real guts of the process is done through feeling, through experience. Feeling is healing. Denying is dying. When I say it's not an intellectual process, what I mean is that um, if, if the journey to God were just intellectual, we wouldn't need to embody. We could just stay in spirit without embodiments and just conceptualize about things. The reason we're here is to feel, is to have experience. That's why we were given the five primary senses of taste, touch, sight, hearing, smell, so that, so that we could integrate, incorporate our life experience and process it through our intellect, through our brain, through our consciousness, and evolve. So this, this very, very prevalent uh, practice of just stuffing the feelings and not wanting to feel is really, it, it's, it's, um, it's stifling growth. And the reason people do that, number one, some people have fear that if they open those dungeon doors, they will, it will consume them because there's so much in their lifetime of pain and hurt and suffering. And some people are afraid of what might come out. And other people have an unconscious memory of where all those wounds were laid in at childhood when people built these walls around their hearts to save their lives. It just naturally happens unconsciously. Where a child will start building walls and walls and walls when the abuse and the violation and the non-love and the, and the, the uh, um, abandonment is, is happening and getting laid in, our souls, by design, build these walls so that we can stay in our embodiments and we don't kill ourselves or magnetize getting killed. But then what happens is as we become older, we feel the ache and the separateness all the more. Now we stayed alive and we have these walls, but then we have people have this fear of intimacy and people don't trust and people don't let themselves really become vulnerable again, but then they feel the ache and the separation. The reason is those same walls that we build to protect ourselves from getting hurt also protect us from feeling love because a wall is a wall is a wall. A wall is not discerning. So the same walls we have around ourselves to protect ourselves are also keeping love at bay. And the way to really experience love, which equals God, is by breaking those walls down, by opening the dungeon doors and giving yourself permission to feel. To feel. It's the shamanic way of going into those fires of hell, the, in, the personal internal hell. And when I say shamanic, having the tools, the guidance, the mentorship, the power to go into those personal hells and deal with them and process them and understand them and bring illumination to them and emerge the other side, out the other side, victorious, whole, renewed, restored, and in a new consciousness of love. That's what really has to happen. So um, to see people walking around with so much baggage and so much hurt and pain that's not getting addressed and yet learning to say all the right spiritual terms and phrases to sound important, to sound evolved, it's hollow. It's like a flower pot with no dirt and no flower in it. It's like, oh, look what I've got. But it's hollow. It's about feeling and living and being alive. Another reason people don't feel is that there is a belief system that's shared by most of the population in the world that some of those feelings are bad and wrong. I know many of the disciples who've lived with me and trained with me, they do not want to face their anger because they think that they're bad people. There's nothing wrong with feeling anger. It's a perfectly normal, functioning, everyday aspect and part of life. It's not loving, and it's not what we want to keep. But the fact that it's there is perfectly normal, acceptable, and okay. What's worse is not feeling it or channeling it inappropriately. Because if you, if you stuff it, what's going to happen is it has to come out, and it squirts out in inappropriate ways on inappropriate people. Remember, lava always finds the weak spot in the rock. And because our souls by design 
are made of love and where we exist solely to become greater love, to share love, spread love, receive love, anything that is not loving, our, our consciousness is a sealed vortex, it's a sealed environment. And anything that's not loving that's inside of us, we introduced into ourselves. And our souls are constantly pushing it out, pushing it out. The same way, you know, if you get glass embedded in you, your body will push the glass to the surface. Your body is constantly pushing out what doesn't serve it. And if you're fighting to stuff it down, you have tension, you have torque, and that creates illness, creates disease, it creates migraines, it creates so many blockages and stoppages and ailments in the body. So how you um, create a flow and create a harmony and create a forward motion is by being proactive. It's saying, I'm going to seek them out and open them up and use proper tools that I've learned, spiritual tools, to transmute, to eject, to transmute, to eliminate, or some combination thereof, all that is not love within myself. It's the way to go. It's the fast track to God.